Rapunzel. There was once a couple who longed for a child, and finally they were expecting a baby. We're going to have a baby, dear. Now, why are you looking so sad? I'm not sad. I just want to have some of that lovely lettuce growing in that garden. Oh no! Don't you know that that garden belongs to the evil witch? I know, I know. But I just can't get my mind off the lettuce. I'm yearning to have it. Oh please, won't you get me some? The husband could not bear to see his wife like this, so decided to risk getting some lettuce for her. That night, he climbed over the wall of the garden next door, quickly plucked some lettuce, and ran back to give it to his wife. The next day, he saw his wife again, standing, looking out of the window. Now, what's troubling you, my dear? Didn't you enjoy the lettuce? I really enjoyed the lettuce, darling. But now I just have to have some more. My dear wife, you know how dangerous it can be if the witch finds out. Ask me for anything else, and I will get it for you. But the wife could not stop yearning for the lettuce, and finally her husband agreed to once again get some for her. Once again, the man climbed into the witch's garden next door. But just as he was going to pluck the lettuce, a booming voice stopped him. How dare you steal the lettuce from my garden, you thief! Oh, madam, I'm so sorry. I'm not a thief, but my wife is expecting a baby and was dying to have some of your lovely lettuce. That is no excuse for stealing. I know, I know, and I am really very sorry. But I beg you, please show some mercy. It's only because of my wife's condition that I came to get the lettuce. Hmm. Well, I will let you have the lettuce and as much as you want, but you have to promise me something. Uh, anything you say, madam. When your wife has the baby, you have to give it to me. What? You heard me, and if you do not agree, you will pay for it. The husband was so scared that he agreed to the witch's demand. When the baby was born, the young man and his wife were very happy. However, soon the witch arrived to take away the little baby. Oh, please have pity! We have waited so long for our child. Don't take away our little daughter. Your husband has made a promise, and you have to keep it. Hand over the baby; she is mine now. <laughs> The witch picked up the baby and left the couple heartbroken. She named the little girl Rapunzel. As time passed, Rapunzel grew up into a very beautiful girl with long golden hair, and the witch was now worried. Rapunzel is growing up into a lovely young lady. I should not let anyone see her, as someone might take her away, or she might run away with someone. I have to find a place where no one can get to her. I will not let her get away from me. The witch took Rapunzel deep into the woods, locked her up in a tall tower, and closed the entrance. Oh, mother, why are you locking me here? What will I do here all alone? Don't you worry your head about that. I will visit you every day and bring you all that you need. But mother, you have closed the entrance to the tower, so how will you come up? When I come, I will say, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, my dear, let down your hair. Your mother is here. So when the witch called out, Rapunzel would let down her long golden hair, and the witch would climb up to the tower. Time passed by, and Rapunzel turned into a beautiful young lady of sixteen. She would pass her time singing in her beautiful voice. One day. The prince of the land was out hunting. When he happened to pass near the tower where Rapunzel was locked, and heard her singing, "What a beautiful voice! I wonder who is singing in these deep woods." The prince kept wandering till he came to the tower where Rapunzel was locked, but he could not find any way to get into the tower. 
he suddenly heard someone coming and quickly hid behind some bushes. Soon, he saw the witch approaching the tower. She looked up and called out. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, my dear, let down your hair, your mother is here. The prince watched with amazed eyes as the golden hair came down and the witch climbed up. Aha! So that is how one can get up the tower. The prince waited till the witch came down. After the witch had gone, he waited to make sure there was no one else around, and changing his voice, called out. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, my dear, let down your hair. Your mother is here. Mother just left a while ago. Why is she back so soon? I better not disobey her or she will get angry. Immediately, Rapunzel let down her long shaft of golden hair. The prince quickly climbed up, and when he saw the beautiful Rapunzel, he immediately fell in love with her. Uh, who... who are you? Please go away, my mother will be very angry if she sees you here. Do not be afraid, pretty lady. Your enchanting voice drew me here and I could not resist finding out who was singing in such a beautiful voice. Though at first Rapunzel was scared when she saw a stranger climb up, she too soon fell in love with the handsome prince. Tell me, my dear, why has your mother locked you up here in the middle of the woods? My mother doesn't want anyone to see me and take me away from her. I'm so glad you found me. Time went on, and the prince came to visit Rapunzel more and more often, and they both started loving each other more and more. The prince now wanted to marry Rapunzel, but he couldn't think of a way to get her out of the tower. My dear Rapunzel, I cannot wait to make you my bride. When your mother comes, shall I ask for your hand? Oh, no, no, you must never do that. If my mother comes to know you visit me, she will do something terrible. Please, promise me you will never let my mother know. All right, all right. I won't let your mother know. And don't worry. I will find a way of getting you out of here. But one day, Rapunzel made a big mistake when the witch came to visit her. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, my dear, let down your hair. Your mother is here. Prince climbs up in a jiffy, but you take so long and you are so heavy also. What prince? Ah, uh, no. No, no, no. I, I, I meant... You horrible girl! What have you been up to behind my back? I wanted to protect you from the world, but you have backstabbed me. I will make you pay for it. I will banish you to the desert. No. No, mother, I... But the witch was very angry. And in a fit of fury, she cut off Rapunzel's beautiful hair and sent her off. She then waited for the prince, who soon made his way to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel. It's me, your prince. Let down your hair. The witch let down Rapunzel's long hair, and the prince quickly climbed up. My darling, I am here. So you are the one who wants to steal Rapunzel from me. Just you wait and see what I do to you. When the prince saw the witch, he got so scared that he lost his grip, and down, down, down he fell. He fell on some bushes, so his life was saved but some thorns from the bushes pricked his eyes so badly that he could not see. The dejected prince didn't know what to do, where to find his beloved Rapunzel. He just followed his horse wherever it led him. He survived by eating some fruit and berries growing on the trees. Oh, my darling Rapunzel, where are you? 
I will not stop searching till I find you, my love. I cannot live without you. For a long time, the prince kept wandering. He went over hills and valleys and over plains till he finally reached the desert where Rapunzel had been sent by the wicked witch. He was so tired that he sat down to rest for some time and dozed off. After some time, he was suddenly awakened by someone singing beautifully. Rapunzel, Rapunzel. Oh, this beautiful voice can belong to no other than my Rapunzel. I can recognize her voice anywhere. The blind prince started staggering across the desert in the direction of the voice. He was so weak that he couldn't even shout out his beloved's name. But even from a distance away, Rapunzel recognized the figure of the prince making his way towards her. She couldn't believe her eyes. She dashed over to her prince, who collapsed in her arms. My sweetheart, I knew you would finally find me. Oh, I am so happy! <laughs> I am so happy! Tears of joy were streaming down Rapunzel's cheeks, and suddenly a miracle happened. As her tears fell on the prince's eyes, they opened, and he could see again. My love, my dear love. I have been looking for you everywhere, and have now found you, my sweet Rapunzel. Your days of misery are over. Your mother will never be able to get you now. I cannot believe we are finally together again. Is this a dream? No, sweetheart. This is no dream. You are really with me, and I shall love and protect you always. So saying. The prince picked up Rapunzel and put her on his horse, and they both made their way to his kingdom. The king and queen were overjoyed on seeing their beloved son again, and happily accepted Rapunzel as their son's bride. There was feasting and dancing and merrymaking for many days, as the prince wed his bride, and they together led a happy life and ruled wisely over their kingdom. Hansel and Gretel. In a little house in the woods near a quiet little meadow, lived the poor woodcutter with his wife and two children, Hansel the boy and Gretel the girl. However, land was hit by famine, and the woodcutter faced great difficulty and misery. We are back to facing hard times again, dear husband. There is no food; just one last loaf left in the kitchen. How are we going to feed the children and keep ourselves alive too? It is a hard decision. But if the children do not go, we will all die. Woodcutter's wife tried convincing Woodcutter that they would need to leave their children in the forest, like how they did last time. Oh, please do not make me go through this misery again. It is a very difficult choice for me. Even if there is little, we should share the last of the food with our children. They are so small. What will they do if we leave them? I do not want to hear any more about this. The children have to go, and that is final. No begging or pleading is going to make me change my mind. In the next room, the children lay wide awake. Overhearing their parents talk, once again they found themselves in the same pitiful situation. Hansel got out of his bed to pick up pebbles from the yard like last time, but this time their mother had locked the door from outside. But nonetheless, he reassured his little sister. Don't you worry, Gretel. We will find our way back like we did the last time. The next morning, their stepmother gave them a piece of bread each, and they all started to walk together towards forest.
Hansel crumbled his piece of bread inside his coat pocket and kept dropping the morsels along the way until they reached the forest. Children, stay here till we come back. Lie down when you get tired and eat the bread when you get hungry. We will come to fetch you in the evening. And no matter what, always remember that I love you. Now, now, stop all this. They are old enough to know they have to lie down when they are tired and have to eat when they are hungry. Stop wasting time and let's go catch the wood. The children fell asleep and evening came and went. They woke up late at night to find themselves alone, left behind by their parents yet again, and a rude shock. All of the crumbs had vanished. Oh, Hansel, where have all the morsels of bread vanished? How could I have been so silly? How did I forget that the birds and insects would eat away the breadcrumbs? <laughs> now, now, Greta, don't cry. You wait and watch. I will somehow find our way back home. The poor little children walked all day through the forest, but alas, they couldn't find their way out. Suddenly, they both heard the sound of a beautiful bird perched on a tree, singing so beautifully that they stood entranced. Oh, what a beautiful bird, and how beautifully it sings! Oh, Hansel, look, it is flying away. Come on, come on, let's follow it. The beautiful bird flew deeper and deeper into the forest, and Hansel and Gretel kept following it until it finally landed on the roof of a beautiful house. Hey, Gretel, look. This house is made of bread and cake, and the windows are made of sugar. Oh, wow! I am going to take a bite of the roof, and you, Gretel, can have a piece of the window. Hansel, this is so sweet. I just love it. And so the two children heartily ate cake, bread, and sugar after days of starving. Suddenly, the door opened, and an old and scary-looking woman crept quietly. Oh, such dear children! Who are you, and who has brought you here? You look so tired and hungry. Come in, come in. Don't be afraid. Eat all you want and then rest. You're welcome to stay with me. No harm shall come to you here. Come, let me show you where you will be sleeping. The witch led them into a room with pretty windows, little bed covered with beautiful linen. all real? I can't believe it. Are these our beds? I've never seen such pretty sheets and pillows. Ooh, this feels like heaven. The old woman was actually a wicked witch. The house of bread, cake, and sugar was made to lure little children. The witch only pretended to be nice to children, but once they came in, she killed them, cooked them, and ate them. It is morning. Let me see what my prisoners are doing. Ooh, I can't wait to cook them. Look at those rosy cheeks. What a delicious soup I will make of them. She pulled Hansel out of bed, dragged him by his hand, and locked him in a cage. She then went inside to wake Gretel up. Get 
up, you lazy girl. Go draw water. I want you to heat some water. I'm going to eat your brother now. The poor little girl was terrified. She sobbed and cried. But the cruel witch showed no mercy. Gretel did what the witch had told her to. She hung a huge cauldron of water and lit the fire. But the evil witch had other horrible plans. Come here, girl. I have netted the dough and heated the oven to bake the bread. Go creep into the oven and check if it is heated enough for the baking. The witch pushed Gretel towards the hot oven. She wanted to lock her in once she was inside so she could bake her and eat her too. However, Gretel was a very smart and clever girl and immediately guessed what the witch was planning to do. Oh, I am so sorry for being so thoughtless. The door of the oven seems so small. How will I get in? You silly child. The door is big enough for me to get in. Then why can't you? Look, this is how you go inside. The witch put her head into the oven, and this was the moment Gretel was waiting for. Acting swiftly, she pushed with all her might, shut the heavy iron door and fastened the bolt before the witch could get out. The witch began to howl and screech in anger and pain and was finally burnt to death. Gretel ran up to the cage and unbolted the door. Hansel, Hansel, the mean witch is dead. We are safe now. Come, Gretel, we must be off now. We have to find our way out of the forest so that we can go home. While they were walking out, they looked at a small room from where pearls and precious stones were overflowing. Come, Gretel, pick up as many stones as will fit in your pinafore. I, too, will fill my pockets. I am sure the witch would have stolen these, and now that she is dead, there is no one to claim them. Both the children picked up as many precious stones as they could and started to make their way out of the forest. After they had walked for a few hours, they reached a stream of water. They saw a beautiful duck there and requested her to cross the stream. The good duck came to them and helped them cross the stream. They thanked the duck and started walking away from the stream, out of the forest. After a few minutes of walking, Hansel noticed a house at the distance. Oh look, Gretel! Do you see our house there where the sun is shining on the roof? The children were overjoyed and ran towards their father, hopping and skipping all the way. Their father was waiting for them with outstretched arms, tears streaming down his face. Oh, how blessed I am! I never thought I would ever see my beloved children ever again. You know, my dears, I have been so miserable and sorry ever since I left you alone in the forest. I know I was a weak man. I should not have listened to your stepmother. Now she is dead and gone, and I have been to the forest many times looking for you both. Don't be sad, father. We know why you did what you did, and we still love you as much as ever. And now we have a big surprise for you. Hansel and Gretel emptied their pockets and all the jewels fell onto the wooden floor. One fistful after another, the children made a little heap of precious stones and jewels and pearls. Oh my God, where did you get all this? I hope you didn't do anything wrong. Not at all, Father. We would never do anything that would make you ashamed of us. It is a long story. We will tell you later. That was the moment their days of misery were over. They had enough to feed themselves and help others in the village too. The day the brave and kind children, Hansel and Gretel, returned home, they brought with them joy, prosperity and peace to their entire village and lived happily ever after with their father.